Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thanks. I feel better now. Uh, it's simply fantastic to be back in studs, uh, to be able to have our Honors Day ceremony uh, in almost close to normal. A few concessions are concessions to masks. The other reason for those of us who were there last year, there are no mosquitoes to attack us, so that's also good. This is one of the really fantastic uh, evenings, events of the year. Uh, we celebrate the remarkable accomplishments of so many of our students in the central mission of the college, which is intellectual achievement, accomplishment, and the education uh, at Bowdoin. And uh, it's, it's just one of the, the most fantastic moments for me uh, in the entire academic year. Uh, I am incredibly grateful to my faculty colleagues for being here tonight, for presenting to their students the awards that the faculties in each of the departments have, uh, um, have voted on for their students uh, and to be here to help celebrate the accomplishments. And I know we have some families here tonight as well, which is also fantastic. So um, we specifically focus here on departmental and program prizes. So we get to celebrate what happens within the programs and the departments. Not every one of the academic prizes will be presented tonight. Some are dependent on final grades and, uh, and the delivery of a thesis. Um, but all of the awards will be listed in the commencement program. We had a luncheon earlier today where we honored the students who uh, received awards that recognized their leadership, their character, and their personal accomplishments. Uh, and also celebrated the four seniors uh, who have the privilege of being selected as speakers, which is a, is a competitive selection process for commencement and the baccalaureate ceremony. And I just want to share with you their names. The leadership awards presented were the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Cup to Christopher Denny in the class of 2024, the Michael Francis Michike III Award to Elise Hawking from the class of 2022. Elise is here with us tonight as well. The Andrew Allison Haldane Cup to Jessica Bay from the class of 2022, and the President's Award to Ryan Britt from the class of 2022. The commencement prizes, which were presented to members of the class of 2022, are the Goodwin Commencement Prize to Ryan Britt, the class of 1868 prize to Journey Brown, the Dalva Stanwood Alexander First Prize to Brianna Cunliffe, and the Dalva Stanwood Alexander Second Prize to Matsui Aikida. At this time, it's my great pleasure to invite to the stage my colleague and friend, Dean Jennifer Scanlon. Good evening, everybody, and thank you, Clayton. The Sidney B. Karofsky Award for Junior Faculty, given by members of the Karofsky family, is to be awarded annually by the Dean for Academic Affairs in consultation with the Committee on Appointments, Promotions, and Tenure. The decision is based on student evaluations of teaching and given to a teacher, an outstanding Bowdoin teacher who, quote, best demonstrates the ability to impart knowledge, inspire enthusiasm, and stimulate intellectual curiosity. The prize is given to a member of the faculty who has taught at the college for at least two years. I am very pleased to announce that the 2022 recipient of the Sidney B. Karofsky Award for junior faculty is Sarah M. Harmon, Assistant Professor of Computer Science. So well deserved, Sarah. At this point in the program, we were going to have the pleasure of listening to Brian Leo from the class of 2025 and Ari Giesler from the class of 2023 perform the musical interlude. 
Due to unforeseen circumstances, they are unable to perform for us this evening, but we thank Brian and Ari for their time spent in preparation. We will now begin the presentation of departmental prizes, beginning with Africana Studies. We ask that student recipients for each department come to the stage at the same time as the department's faculty presenter. Descriptions of all prizes are in the program, so I encourage you to follow along. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Oh, there you go. Oh, honey. Uh, good evening. I'm Judith Castleberry, Associate Professor in the Africana Studies Department, and we're just thrilled to award this year's Linux Book Prize to Angela Wallace. Thank you, Angela. Beautiful work. Beautiful work. Hi, I'm Susan Kaplan. I'm the uh, director of the Arctic Museum and chair of the anthropology department. And it is my pleasure to present the Engaged Anthropology Prize to Christiana Okafor. The committee who chose Christiana for this prize was impressed by the creativity that, and the way she combines scholarly inquiry into environmental health and structural inequalities with anti-racist advocacy and community-based activism. We look forward to seeing what she does next. Julia Perillo has earned the Elbridge Sibley Anthropology Prize for her stellar academic performance. An accomplished leader in and out of the classroom, Julia, who just turned in her honors thesis, is passionate about learning languages and exploring issues of identity, language, and politics. She's headed to the CUNY Graduate Center in New York City to pursue a PhD in linguistic anthropology, and we're thrilled for her. Good evening, I'm Susan Wagner, the Chair of Art History, and it is my honor to present these prizes to these extraordinary students tonight. We've selected Lucy Siegel, class of 22, for our Anne Bartlett Lewis Memorial Prize in Art History. Lucy has excelled in her classes and is also the co-creator of the innovative webinar series, Art Up Close which features brief vignettes of faculty and staff speaking on an object from the Bowdoin College Museum of Art. Our Art History Junior Year Prize is shared by three scholars. This year, Brandon Schuster, Ramiro Storney, 
and Jing Yi Wang. Brandon, class of 23, from his first year onward, explored the field of medieval art. Among his many extracurricular activities, Brandon has worked for the Center for Policing Equity, which aims at eradicating racism in policing. Congratulations, Brandon. Ramiro Storni, class of 23 in absentia, is enrolled at the Danish Institute for Study Abroad this spring. This past summer, he held a Gibbons Fellowship working with Professor Dana Bird, using his skills in data analytics to research the provenance of works of art. Congratulations, <laughs> Ramiro. <laughs> Jing Yi Wang, has almost completed her art history major, even though she's a junior, with concentrations in Chinese art, modern and contemporary art, and medieval art. Along with Ramiro, Jane spearheaded the Bowdoin College Museum of Art Student Ambassadors Program. She has hosted the museum's virtual Family Saturday, and you can view her November presentation online. Congratulations. Finally, our recipient for the Art History Senior Prize goes to Alicia Osemabor. Alicia demonstrates the range of her art history training in two recent positions. This past summer, she interned at the Met Cloisters in New York, where she researched medieval tavern imagery. While here at Bowdoin, she's worked with Anne Collins Goodyear, co-director of the Bowdoin College Museum of Art, on two post-war and contemporary women artists. Congratulations. Hi, my name is Carrie Skanga, and I'm here to represent all of the visual arts faculty and staff who are so proud of these artists tonight, and um, we want to recognize them for their incredible achievements and outstanding art they've made in our department this year. So um, we have Kami Amaskua. <laughs> We keep the mask on when we speak, right? Mask on when we speak? Yeah, you can take it off. Okay. Hello, I am Janthi Selinger, and I'm here on behalf of the Asian Studies Department to present the prizes uh, for, Asian, for Asian Studies, Japanese, and Xiao Ko will join me for presenting it for Chinese. Um, the Asian Studies Prize is awarded to two students this year. Ella Haman is a double major in Asian Studies and Physics who not only invested herself deeply in the study of Japan while here, but boldly took on the first ever honors thesis on Filipino fiction at Bowdoin. Woohoo! <laughs> um, venturing in so many ways where few have gone before. 
This prize recognizes her superb honors thesis work, as well as her tremendous service as a learning assistant during the previous academic year, where she supported students learning remote, remotely, emotionally, and linguistically. So. Congratulations. Um, Elise Hawking, our second winner has shown exemplary self-motivation, enthusiasm, and dedication to her studies of South Asia. She's acquired an admirable depth of knowledge about South Asian religions and cultures, and has produced mature work that demonstrates a deep engagement with core issues in India today. Hello everyone, my name is Xiao Kejia, a coordinator of the Chinese Language Program. The Chinese Language Prize is awarded to Ray Dong for his commitment to the study of Chinese language and the contributions to our community. As the president of Chinese Language and Culture Club, he has organized a series of cultural activities for the Bowdoin community over the past challenging years. Without his support, our students would not have been able to eat delicious handmade dumplings on campus during the pandemic. Thank you so much, Ray. Congratulations. And last but not the least, the Japanese Language Prize is presented in absentia to Maya Lam, a leader in the Bowdoin Japanese Language Program. This past year, she has worked as a learning assistant and served as a mentor and model for new students in the program. It's very unusual for us to give this award to a sophomore, but Maya has truly earned it through her tireless efforts to support the community through the challenges of these past few years. Good evening. I'm Ben Gorski, the current chair of the biochemistry program, and it's my great pleasure to honor these three students this evening, starting with Catherine Barrett, who is uh, being awarded a prize for being a committed, enthusiastic, hardworking, and especially creative scientist with respect to pro proposing experiments at a level far beyond her standing as a junior in college. Congratulations, Catherine. A little bit better. Our senior prize this year is jointly awarded to, to two students, Isabel Ball and Fung Lung. Fung has done extraordinarily well in her coursework, distinguished herself in the lab, and has published two first author papers as an undergraduate. So congratulations, Fung. And also Isabel Ball, who is an incredibly hard worker, coupled with many ounces of foresight, intellect, perseverance, and efficiency. She is a power to behold in the lab and the classroom. Congratulations, Isabel.
I'm Ann McBride, Chair of the Biology Department, and I am thrilled to be awarding prizes to these five students this evening. Uh, the first prize is the Copeland Gross Biology Prize. That's going to Anthea Bell and Lauren Wa Waters. And both Thea and Lauren have embraced their liberal arts education, engaging in the arts while majoring in biology. Thea's professors across biology note how deeply and thoroughly she learns the material in their courses. In addition to her soon-to-be-completed stellar honors project, we can all enjoy her sculptures online, reflecting her visual arts minor, including Let Them Eat Plastic and Flood and Fire from the Rue Center Earth exhibition last fall. On top of outstanding coursework, Lauren is independently motivated, unflappable, and clear thinking regarding her honors research results and their implications. She made a long series of precise technical steps look easy in the lab, and on the stage, she demonstrated her thespian chops, smoothly transitioning among roles from a naiad to Aphrodite. The uh, Donald and Harriet Maycomber Prize in Biology is being awarded to Jeremy Hoyn Grovesmaner and Yi Ping Wang. Both Jeremy and Yi Ping, known as Esther, have produced outstanding work in diverse biology courses throughout their time at Bowdoin, including developing their writing skills with focused intention, accepting input with grace. Jeremy is exceptionally diligent and serious about his honors research. He has created an impressively large data set of needle pigments from his Alaska field site and is independent-minded, having taught himself R. Esther has smoothly transitioned through three different research projects in my lab, culminating in an honors project where she has worked independently to learn techniques, gather, and analyze data. She has made invaluable contributions to our group and to the broader biology community as a learning assistant. And finally, uh, the James Malcolm Moulton Prize in biology is um, being awarded to Kelly Navarro who is a biology environmental studies coordinate major with a minor in education. And she, Kelly has shown in biology classes during her first three years through her hard work, dedication, and enthusiasm for the natural world from the microscopic to ecosystems. systems. She has engaged in marine research projects from coast to coast, won a Goldwater scholarship, and has supported and inspired other students as a learning assistant. Congratulations, all. So I'm Beth Stumler from the chemistry department, and I have the honor of awarding numerous um, prizes. I'm going to start out tonight with our first year student chemistry laboratory award to Sophia Totini um, Darvis in absentia. We next have our first year student achievement awards, one in general chemistry to Jasmine Gia. and in advanced chemistry to Claire Stoddard. We next have the Samuel Kammerling Laboratory Award that um, we're awarding this year to Charlie McLarnon. In, abs in absentia. 
And I'm going to now embark on some awards to juniors and seniors. And I just want to take a moment to say what a remarkable group of juniors and seniors we've had this year, um, many of whom are on the stage. It has been a remarkable and amazing group who I think really exemplify spirits of community, who for me as chair have stepped in over the past three, four years to participate in searches, um, act as learning assistants, laboratory instructors. So I'm just so proud and grateful of this group of students. So I'm gonna start with recognizing Colleen McLoon, who is receiving the Philip Weston Meserve Prize in Chemistry. And next, an amazing senior who has uh, kind of anointed herself and a partner in crime as the chemistry social chair, <laughs> who is a member of Team Dirt in the Vasudevan lab. Um, wonderful Chess Kali. <laughs> And the next student, a senior biochemistry major, who I had the pleasure of knowing in her first year at Bowdoin and who hung out in my lab in her sophomore year, um, who went on, um, did some research with me, is completing an honors project in my lab. But in addition to all of her scientific strengths, has been a really amazing leader. She has taken on projects um, in the Portland area on women's gynecological care, access to care. She was recently awarded a Project for Peace grant. So I'm really just so honored <laughs> to be recognizing Yusura Ali with the Maine American Chemical Society Award. Next, I want to recognize a junior who um, is a chemistry and government, um, chem chemistry major, government minor, um, is also um, one of our social <laughs> chairs, and who has also been working in the um, Vasu Devan lab since his sophomore year and is going to be going on to pursue honors research there. So I'm really pleased to be recognizing Seamus Fry with the Analytical Chemistry Award. And next, um, a special student who my, I've known since his first year, um, who is also doing research in my lab and has worked with me for two summers. Uh, an amazing student, um, can't wait to see what he goes on to do, a chemistry and classics major, Jeffrey Price, who's receiving the Inorganic Chemistry Award. And another senior, a chemistry and physics double major, who is going on to study physical chemistry at MIT, who's been working in the Takamatsu lab, looking at cool photo acids, recognizing Oliver Nix with the physical chemistry award. And finally, an award that recognizes someone who was very special to me when I came to Bowdoin, um, Professor Dana Walker-Mayo, who really uh, catalyzed uh, the idea that undergraduate research could happen at a really deep level at places like Bowdoin. So this award, which um, has been funded by uh, former students and family, uh, is recognizing this year a student, a senior who is a chemistry and Hispanic studies double major, 
She's a student who has been recognized by numerous awards during her time at Bowdoin. She's a Beckman Scholar. I've had the privilege of having her work with me for two summers and this year doing honors. She's a student who is a remarkable leader who has participated uh, in many activities, including being leader of the um, Bowdoin uh, Public Health Group, um, Bear Buddies, Multilingual Mainers, uh, you know, sort of the list goes on and on. She's been an, a key co-leader of our BIPOC Student and Allies in Chemistry Group. I'm really pleased, pleased to be recognizing tonight Emily Pan. And I just should say, with the Dana Walker Mayo Prize. So congratulations, everyone. Good evening, everybody. I'm Allison Cooper, and I'm a member of the faculty of the Department of Romance, Languages, and Literatures, and also of Cinema Studies. And uh, tonight, I'm here wearing my Cinema Studies hat. <laughs> and it is my great pleasure to hand out three awards this evening to some of our outstanding Cinema Studies minors. Uh, it feels woefully inadequate after chemistry <laughs> to just have three, but here we are. <laughs> so um, our Rosebud Prize goes to Emma Kilbride of the class of 2025 for her insightful, balanced, and beautifully written essay on Moonlight and Paris's Burning. Her work demonstrates the kind of promise we hope to encourage and that this prize is intended to acknowledge in a first-year student. Congratulations, Emma. The Sunrise Prize goes to Andrew Nicholson of the class of 2022 for Unforgivable Excused, an essay that considers how black characters operate as both heroes and monsters in the Night of the Living Dead and Get Out. His Cinema Studies professors know Andrew is a brilliant writer, and it is a real pleasure to recognize his work with this award. Finally, last but not least, the Adventurer Prize goes to rising senior Diego Torturo for his audiovisual essay considering how Christopher Nolan starts a puzzle film. A, co a committed gamer, I did not know this about you, Diego. <laughs> Trisha Welsh wrote these notes. <laughs> a committed gamer, Diego explores how the opening scenes of Memento, Inception, and The Prestige set up challenges for the viewer while ostensibly giving the game away. With eight Cinema Studies courses under his belt, Diego ought to know. So congratulations, Diego. Good evening. I'm Rob Soback, the chair of the Department of Classics. And it gives me so much pleasure um, to say a few words about this group. And I'm going to say a few words about them as a group. Um, in an extraordinary year, they've been an extraordinary group of students to have in our department. Um, they have modeled a sense of charity, of kindness, of support to one another, uh, given that they've taken so many classes with each other, um, some over the course of their four-year careers here. 
Um, they have served as learning assistants to each other, um, so mentoring each other through different uh, courses in Greek, in Latin, in ancient history. They have also been model citizens of the department insofar as they've organized community events for themselves, uh, reached out across the Bowdoin campus, and generally shown what it means to be a part of a, a residential arts college in terms of modeling intellectual engagement and also having fun. Um, they have successfully completed the build of the Lego Coliseum. Amazing. And this is their one failure. They failed to assassinate the Emperor Nero, but they had a great time doing so, and we had an amazing month of engagement in that role-playing game. So without further ado, the Nathan Gould Prize goes to senior Jenna Kluke. The J.B. Sewell Greek Prize goes to Francesca Cusero. The J.B. Sewell Latin Prize goes to Carolyn Sutliff. The coolest name in the whole prize program. The Hannibal Hamlin Emery Latin Prize goes to Peter Inger in absentia. And we have three winners of the Jasper Jacob Stahl Fellowship for the Study of Mediterranean Antiquity. First, Emily Coffin. Second, Francesca Cusero. And last but not least, Gianna Turk. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Steve Majersik, the chair of the Computer Science Department. Um, I, I love this evening, um, but especially this year, <laughs> having found out that my department colleague, Sarah Harmon, is the Kurofsky Prize winner. Uh, congratulations, Sarah. So, so, so deserving. Okay, so we have two prizes, uh, the Computer Science uh, Senior Year Book Prize and the Ellen B. Tucker Computer Science Research Prize. Uh, the Computer Science Senior Year Prize goes to two students this year, uh, Rose She and Braden Fisher. Uh, Rose, unfortunately, uh, was not able to be with us tonight because she's recovering from COVID. Um, but I think she's watching. Um, if you are, Rose, hi. Um, and uh, I hope you're feeling better. Uh, uh, Rose has been a truly outstanding student of computer science, um, achieving, um, as the uh, prize description says, uh, the highest distinction in the computer science major. Uh, in addition, though, Rose has been extraordinarily generous with her time and energy outside of the classroom. She's been a learning assistant, an individual tutor. She has participated in academic affairs for admitted students. Her feedback on candidates in the many searches we've had over the last few years has been invaluable, and she's organized events for Bowdoin Women in Computer Science. Uh, congratulations, Rose. The, um, the other um, Senior Year Book Prize winner is Braden Fisher. Uh, I had never had Braden in any of my classes, but I kept hearing about him from other computer science faculty. They talked about how much they enjoyed having him in their classes. Super smart, they said. Works hard, has a knack for solving really difficult problems that, in the way he explains it, makes it actually sound easy. I felt left out. 
But Braden is in my nature-inspired computation class this semester, and I understand uh, their praise. He has indeed achieved the highest distinction in the computer science major. Congratulations, Braden. All right, uh, the Alan B. Tucker Computer Science Research Prize uh, this year is being awarded to Stephen Crawford. Uh, Stephen has shown uncommon skill and dedication leading multiple research projects in computer science at Bowdoin. These have included a summer research project on image classification using machine learning and his current honors project on image classification using machine learning, oh, I'm sorry, and his current honors project on identifying unusual appliances using energy consumption data. I'm looking forward to his honors project presentation. Congratulations, Stephen. Congratulations. Good evening, I'm Emily Peterman from Earth and Oceanographic Science. This evening we are awarding four awards, um, and I wanted to share just a brief anecdote about each of our students and tell you a little bit about why they've been awarded these awards. The Earth and Oceanographic Science Senior Academic Achievement Award goes to Perrin Milliken. Perrin, your professors talked about your in-depth contributions across the curriculum, the curiosity that you bring to class and lab, and your original creative contributions to our department. You've been exceptional, and it's been our pleasure. The next award is the Earth and Oceanographic Science Biogeochemistry Award. So biogeochemistry is a course that's required by all of our majors, and it's meant to bring together all of the disparate spheres of the study of the Earth. Perrin, for your infectious enthusiasms, and demonstrating exceptional talents in biogeochemistry and achieving biogeochemistry nirvana, your professors have awarded you this prize. Our next award is awarded to two students, Sawyer Goldman and Anna Gunther. This is the Earth and Oceanographic Science Outreach Excellence Award. There are many reasons why these two students have earned this prize, but we'd like to particularly recognize their work in co-curating the exceptional Earth Art Exhibition and for providing an outlet for students to showcase how climate impacts us all, for bringing science and art together in the Rue Center, and for creating an extraordinary series of events that have engaged our community and brought us closer together. Thank you. Anna, I hope Portugal is treating you well. <clears throat> the last award that we're awarding this evening is the Earth and Oceanographic Science Service to the Department Award. Andrew Treat is the student you can count on. If you're shorthanded for a field lab, he agrees to help at the drop of a hat. If students are working on, on independent research and need a second pair of hands, Andrew is the person who shows up. He is an EOS file. He loves his courses and he brings his full self to each class. His enthusiasm is contagious and having him in one of your courses changes the dynamic because of his thrill of learning and his can-do attitude. He enriches our department and we thank him so much for his varied contributions. Thank you. Hello, I'm Eric Nelson. I'm the current chair of the economics department. 
And tonight we're going to award our junior prizes. We give our senior prizes away after um, honors projects are in and after final grades are in. So we have two awards tonight. Um, the first award is called the Adam Smith Book Prize, and this award recognizes juniors who demonstrate exceptional analytical skills and originality in the study of economy and society. So we have four in absentia. So I'll first name the ones that are absentia, and then our one winner who's on the stage will be awarded at that point. So Benjamin Brown, uh, Drew Hoffer, Elliot Small, and Hunter Steele are all in absentia. And our one winner is here tonight, Maddie Corsetti. Our second prize is the Paul H. Douglas Prize. Um, this was, Paul H. Douglas was the class of 1913. And for those who have studied economics before and have used the Cobb-Douglas production function, that is the same Douglas. Um, he was a respected labor economist and he was actually a US senator for a while. So this recognizes a junior who shows, or juniors, who show outstanding promise in scholarship and economics. And we have three award winners and one is in absentia. Elijah Rowland is not here tonight. But our first winner that is here tonight is Emma. Bom oh, sorry, last name too. Emma Bomfam. <laughs> and our second award winner that's here tonight is Gabe Batista. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Doris Santoro, and I'm representing the Education Department tonight. And we are awarding uh, two uh, categories of awards. The first is to recognize our Bowdoin Teacher Scholars. And for the last 14 weeks, beginning in early January, these students were no longer students, but they were teachers and they were working every day as teachers in a local school um, all day long and um, making that big transition. So I'm really excited to present uh, these new teachers to you today. Uh, the first person is Taylor Emery, and she is an English teacher. The next is Mohammed Kilani, and he is a Spanish teacher. And we have Chelsea Whiting Puckett, and they are an English teacher. Next, I'm very proud to um, introduce Kate Moynihan, who has, and recognize Kate Moynihan, who is a coordinate major in English, or I'm sorry, in education and psychology. And she is being recognized for her research on children's creative play in early elementary school. And the studying, she's been studying the impacts of structured play versus loose parts play such as playing with Legos. So we're very proud to recognize Kate's original research.
Good evening again. I am not Mark Foster, but I will do my very best. Um, as you can see, we have quite a number of award winners in the Department of English, and I'm very happy to be able to present them. For the Philip Henry Brown Prize, Julia Perillo. For the, American, for the Academy of American Poets, Colette Inez Poetry Prize, Robert Murray. For the Hawthorne Prize, Zoe Wilson. For the Natalie Walker Llewellyn Poetry Prize, Lily Poppin. In absentia. For the nonfiction prize, the first winner is Irene Brogdon. And the second winner of the nonfiction prize is Natsumi Meyer. We also have two winners of the poetry prize. The first is Jordan Birmingham. And the second is Clayton Wackerman. We have two winners of the Prey English Prize. The first is Cuban Kim, who I believe is in absentia. Congratulations to Cuban. The second winner of the Prey English Prize is Grace Monahan. For the Forbes Ricker Jr. Memorial Poetry Prize, we also have two winners. The first is May Block. May, May Bach, excuse me. The second winner of the Forbes Ricker Jr. Memorial Poetry Prize is Charles O'Brien, who I believe is in absentia. We have two winners of the David Sewell Premium. The first is Jingwan Huang. And the second is Carolina Weatherall. For the Mary B. Sinkinson Short Story Prize, the award goes to Andrew Nicholson. We have three winners of the Bertram Lewis Smith Jr. Prize, Anika Moore in absentia, Josh Pablo Patel, and John McDermott Welschlager. And that concludes the English Department Prizes. Congratulations.
I'm Jill Perlman, and I have the honor of giving this year's Environmental Studies Prizes. Uh, the Academic Award in Environmental Studies goes to Bree Cunliffe. Bree has been a stellar ES student. She's just completed an honors project that examines connections between bio biomass and environmental justice that builds on her summer work with an environmental justice NGO. She's also been a fantastic learning assistant for the environmental policy class, helpful to underclass students in that core class in many ways. Thank you, Bree. We have three community service awards. The first one goes to Samara Nassour. Samara was an organizer in her first year for the Bowdoin chapter of the TEDx Youth Talks. As an international student, she's sought to connect her opportunities here in Maine to her community at home. She's been a fellow for the Nature Conservancy here in Maine and for the office in Tanzania. She's also received a Davis Peace Fellowship to support the development of women and seaweed farmers in Zanzibar, and the list goes on. She's worked as a research assistant for the Social Resilience Project. She's been an active member of Africa Alliance, serving as a vice president, and has also completed an honors project this year on climate change policy. We have another community service award for Lauren Cafe. Lauren is receiving the award for her work with multiple communities in Maine, helping them think about the role of GIS and story maps in supporting climate adaption processes. She's worked with the decision makers in several different mid-coast towns and has supported a number of their projects while also connecting other students to Maine communities. Beyond the classroom, she's met with planning boards, town staff, Sea Grant staff, and presented her very impressive research to these groups. She's also been a lively and effective learning assistant in many classes. <laughs> One more, last but not least, Holden Turner. Holden has contributed actively to the Bowdoin community and beyond in a number of ways, from connecting students in our introductory ES classes to new Mainer farmers and to the Bowdoin Organic Garden, of which he has himself has been a key student leader. He served as an eco-rep and gets rave reviews for his work in the sustainability office. During the pandemic and thereafter, he and his co-host kept the Green Tea podcast alive and lively as he explored new ways of looking at sustainability and asked the deep questions. He pursues his interests, community agriculture for one, with a steadfast determination and an enthusiasm that's contagious to those around him. Thank you. Oh no, the, the light on here, okay. Um, hi, my name is Jay Sosa, and on behalf of the program in Gender, Sexuality, and Women's Studies, I'm thrilled to present the Edith Lansing Kuhn Sills Award to Kyle Putnam. Kyle's professors described them as tenacious, compassionate, and unafraid to push intellectual boundaries. Particularly impressive has been Kyle's initiative as a peer educator around gender, sexuality, and queer identity inside and outside of the classroom. Congratulations. Jill Smith from the German department, and I'm keeping this on. It goes so well with the outfit. 
The German department's prize winners this year span from a first-year student to a graduating senior major and exemplify the liberal arts in their combined study of German with STEM fields and the social sciences. So we have one winner, a senior major, of our Consular Prize in Literary Interpretation, and that is Brigitte Kant. Gita has a rather auspicious last name when it comes to studying German. <laughs> a double major in government and legal studies in German, Gita is currently finishing up an ambitious and original honors project on German literary depictions of the Pacific Islands and the problematic colonial politics that those depictions attempt to disguise. I'm grateful to have taught her in two courses and to have gotten to work with her as a research assistant last spring when she did essential bibliographic research for my current book. Thank you, Gita. She's part of the sketch comedy troupe called Purity Pact, and as all who know Gita will agree, she's a person who wins over the crowd with her personality and intellect. So once again, congrats, Gita. So we have three students who have won the Old Broad Bay Prize in Reading Comprehension and Translation, and they are Sophia Hurst, Sinclair Liddell, and Kenneth Ventres. And I'll talk about each of them briefly and then give them their awards. Sophia Hurst is a coordinate major in Chemistry and Environmental Studies, a German minor, and was also Birgit Tautz's research assistant who managed to work her way through obscure databases, digital copies of 18th century handwriting, and still do superb evaluative work in writing up her results. Sophia is also a recipient of a community grant from CXD who will work this summer on an organic farm that donates food to people in need. According to those who have had her in class, I have not yet, but I hope to, she's an excellent writer and careful reader, listener, and observer who is never afraid to ask tough questions or grapple with perspectives and concepts that are new to her. So congrats, Sophia. Sinclair Liddell is an education and psychology major and a German minor. Sinclair is the only one of this group of students who started German from scratch here at Bowdoin. And by the time I taught Sinclair in German 2204 last spring, she was thinking, speaking, and writing in German as if she were in a 3000 level seminar. No surprise then that she jumped into the 3000 level this fall and has been going strong ever since, a super minor indeed. And on top of that, she's the artistic director of Mask and Gown. Congrats. And Kenny Ventres, a first year student who's equally interested in sciences in German. And in fact, Kenny is already so invested in German that he restarted the German club at the end of last semester, convincing me to be advisor. Um, and also to, he reinvigorated the German table in one fell swoop while we were all absent and couldn't be eating in Thorin. Uh, the Old Broad Bay Prize is not Kenny's only award from the German department. He applied for and received a Hraswith Summer Fellowship, um, and that is also supplemented by a language study fellowship that will allow him to study in Germany this summer. And congrats to all of our prize winners, Kenny. Uh, my name is Andrew Rodlevich. I'm the chair of the Department of Government and Legal Studies and delighted to award our prizes across the various subfields of political science. Uh, two of our honorees are in absentia, uh, Reuben Jones in comparative politics and Isabella Angel in political theory. Uh, so congratulations to them. If you're watching, a wonderful job throughout your career here. <laughs> We do have another winner in the political theory field, however. Uh, 
Emily Statton, who has written a thought-provoking honors thesis on the concept of rebellion in the writings of Albert Camus. Uh, her advisor, Professor Franco, wanted me also to note her love of film, but also, and more importantly, her love of dogs, uh, <laughs> specifically his dog, uh, which, as you may know, uh, is an accomplishment in itself. Uh, sorry, Jill. Uh, <laughs> congratulations, Emily. Our winner in the field of America, American politics is Nina Badger, also of the class of 22, uh, whose professors describe her as intellectually curious, deeply committed to public service, a leader in the classroom, starting, perhaps not coincidentally, with my first year seminar on political leadership back in the before times of fall 2018. Nina, congratulations. <laughs> Our winner in international relations, you've heard of before, Brie Cunliffe. Uh, besides all the nice things you've already heard, uh, Brie is an exceptionally talented student of international relations who pays careful attention to global institutions, their processes, and their effects on everywhere from Latin America to her home state of North Carolina. Brie, congrats. <laughs> And finally, uh, the winner of the uh, Richard E. Morgan Prize for Excellence in the Study of the Constitution, named after my late colleague, Dick Morgan, uh, Augie Rice of the class of 22. Augie's consistently demonstrated an aptitude for and dedication to the law, and I note particularly his case study on the complex First Amendment and equal protection issues in Fulton v. City of Philadelphia, which prompted uh, Professor Marin Sorensen, not given to hyperbole, uh, to extol its exceptional quality, I called it a true joy to read. Congratulations, Augie. Congrats, everybody. <laughs> My name is David Hecht from the Department of History, and I'm award we're awarding um, four prizes today. Um, first is the, um, is the uh, Dr. Samuel and Rose A. Bernstein Prize for Excellence in the Study of History, which goes to three people, none of whom I've had the pleasure of teaching yet, but I hear wonderful things about all of you from my colleagues, and I'm very glad that you're all sophomores, so I still might have a chance to work with you in a class. Um, so we have um, Reed Carlman. Ian Morrison. <laughs> Juliana Vandermark. <laughs> so, our next prize in absentia, in absentia is for the Phyllis Marshall Watson History Prize to Julia Line, um, who I have taught. I, Hope you're watching, although I know it's late in Spain, so maybe not, but I've, I taught Julie in a first year seminar and it was very clear, that, even at that point, that she'd be a wonderful history major, and so we're very glad that she has decided to major in history, and congratulations to Julia and all four of you. Thanks. Hi, my name is Margaret Boyle. I'm the director of our Latin American, Caribbean, and Latinx studies programs, and it's my deep pleasure to recognize the achievements of our three students here tonight. Um, the award winner of our John Harold Turner Prize in Latin American Studies is a senior who has just demonstrated so much growth over her four years here. I reached out to colleagues in my program, and they just talked about her intellectual curiosity, the quality of her written work, and what a pleasure it is to have her 
in their classes. So I want to extend my congratulations to Angelica Peña. We also are recognizing two students who have been awarded the Latin American Studies Award for Public Engagement. Both Emily and Roman led alternative spring break uh, trips through the McKean Center for the Common Good. Both of them were past participants in these trips, um, and they both led distinct programs that did significant work to helping students better understand the complexities of the Latinx community across the US. Um, for Emily in particular, I'm gonna recognize the work that she's done in shaping multilingual Mainers over the last couple of years, working to support students uh, kind of at the early stages of the pandemic virtually and more recently in person at Cape Furbish Elementary School. And Roman has done incredible work for immigrant rights and language justice. He has an important leadership role in the Bowdoin Alliance of Immigrant Rights, and I know both of them are just getting started with the great work they'll do in the community. So please, let's congratulate Emily Pan and Roman Barajon. All right, hello, I'm Jennifer Tabak, I'm chair of the math department. So looking at all of our wonderful students, I realize that I've had the pleasure of teaching all but two of them, and I think I will remedy that next fall. <laughs> so that's been a real honor to teach so many of our fantastic students. So our first prize tonight is the Bowdoin Mathematics Prize. This is the first year we are awarding this prize. I received an email last summer from an anonymous donor who wanted to, um, present us with a large amount of money to give out as prizes because he said he won a prize as a freshman in college and it changed what he was able to do in his career and he was eager to give back. And it was such a lovely story, he was not even a Bowdoin alum. So we are very proud to award this prize this year for the first time. Um, to earn this award, our three winners wrote beautiful essays about how they are currently and plan to contribute to a broader and more inclusive mathematical community. So we look forward to seeing how those plans develop. Our first winner is Quiverline Ochiang. <laughs> Our second winner in absentia is Emily Simons. And our third winner is Maggie Wong. Um, so next I will award our Smythe Mathematics Prize. So this is a prize given to um, sophomores who have demonstrated exceptional performance in mathematics coursework, and it's given every year um, once they are first awarded it. It is a small financial award, which in the late 1800s covered your entire tuition. Now it might buy a book. Um, <laughs> so uh, since there are six of them, I'm gonna ask that we clap at the end. So we have Sarah Greenberg. Oh, or now. <laughs> okay. Um, Gabriel Ong. Uh, Sarah Clark. Um, R of Agarwal in absentia. John Hood. If 
only you might win another prize for which you get a larger award. So <laughs> hang on. <laughs> um, Okay, and our last Smythe Prize goes to Jenny Wang. Okay. Um, so our next prize is the most fun one that I get to announce because it is called the 100 Pi Minus Epsilon Prize, and it comes with a check for $314 and some number of cents. <laughs> Um, this is awarded <laughs> to a first or second year student who demonstrates extraordinary inspiration and joy for the pursuit of mathematics. And so I'm very happy tonight to award two of these prizes. The fir first one goes to Tate Bopner. <laughs> and the second one goes to David Guan. Okay, lastly, I will award our senior prizes. These are awarded to a graduating senior who is just completing their mathematics major with distinction. Um, each student is gifted with a book that a faculty mentor has chosen for them. So our first um, Hammond Prize tonight goes to, <laughs> they keep arriving, <laughs> goes to John Hood. <laughs> And our second Hammond Prize tonight goes to Evie Wallace. And our last Hammond Prize tonight goes to Jenny Wang. We wish them all well as they pursue their graduate education. Hello, I'm Frank Mauchery, representing the music department. And it's great, my great honor to present the Sue Winchell Burnett Music Prize to our senior music major, Danny Little. Danny has been a leader of the Bowdoin music community and scene here, um, taking leadership of the Bowdoin Music Collective. He's been a, a model, um, in our jazz ensembles through his entire time here. A uh, popular member of jazz and funk and R&B groups on campus. And if you heard his senior recital earlier this week, I'm sure you're a fan. Uh, so Danny, congratulations. Um, I would like to award the Mary Hunter Prize uh, to Augie Seeger and Abstentia. This prize is awarded to achievement in writing, and uh, we want to call out uh, Augie's uh, exceptional essay, Fate, Agency, and Power in Dido and Aeneas. So congratulations, Augie. Thank you. There are two uh, faculty to award the, the Summer Increase Kimball Prize in the Natural Sciences because um, this prize represents uh, the best of many science departments and the science faculty 
uh, come together to nominate one award winner from across disciplines. This year, there were many great nominations, and so the prize is going to be split. So I will uh, be happy on the behalf of the physics department, I'm, I'm Madeleine Massal, the chair of the physics department, to uh, award the physics uh, prize, half of this, and uh, my colleague will talk about the other half. Hi again, I'm, I am still Ben Gorski, uh, director of the biochemistry program. And uh, <clears throat> And if I may, I'd just like to say, say a few words. I, I, uh, I truly wish that Jacob Kusama could be here in person tonight to receive the Sumner Increase Kimball Prize. Uh, Jacob's drive to understand roles of human immune cells in meeting, mediating infectious disease is supported by his rigorous engagement with fundamental chemical and biological principles in his coursework and research projects since his arrival at Bowdoin his outstanding coursework, impressive research, his ability to think independently about scientific problems, his strength of purpose to pursue a research career, his tremendous dedication to serve his classmates in the college, and his positive, resilient character highlight his extraordinary promise to develop into a scientific leader. To round it out, he is a kind and generous person who is highly respected as a thoughtful team player by his classmates, lab mates, faculty, staff, and administration. Simply put, he's a sensational student who represents the very best of what Bowdoin stands for. Please join me in congratulating in absentia, Jacob Kasama. So on the physics side, Shane Smolinski is here to receive his prize directly. And he's kind of a shy guy, so it's, it's a great opportunity to speak the praise in front of him and see uh, how well he receives it, because he's <laughs> general modesty and quiet dignity in all circumstances is a byword within the physics department. He gave a really uh, wonderful defense of his honors work today. Uh, he worked on fabricating interdigital transducers, which as he explained in his presentation, are essential elements of the filters that make your, all your cell phone reception possible. So over the course of a year, he has designed and built his own interdigital transducers and explored their properties both computationally, experimentally, and theoretically. So he's just done a really incredible uh, piece of work in the physics department, but he's always also been a tremendous supporter of the social environment, of the department and the faculty in his work as a grader and uh, assistant to the department and um, in his work as sort of an uh, informal mentor and convener of student joy. So thank you, Shane, for everything you've done. We're really happy to have you in the department and to celebrate your achievements with this Interdisciplinary Science Award. Hello, I'm Dan Powell. I'm a postdoc in the neuroscience department, and it's my absolute pleasure to present Anthony with the MUNO Prize in uh, neuroscience, which is awarded to students who show excellence in neuroscience research. And I've been working with Anthony for a little over two years now, and one of our first interactions to get together was over the summer of 2020 when we couldn't actually be in lab. And Anthony, along with um, a few other very talented students, created computational models of neural networks to start generating hypotheses for once we could be back in lab, what actual experiments we could get headed on. And so Anthony actually created some awesome uh, results with his computational networks and then went on to um, use those hypotheses in his honors thesis, which he then has worked tirelessly on over the last year now. And Anthony, in that, um, in that process has mastered one of the most difficult techniques in electrophysiology in order to get the data that he needed to answer the questions that he wanted. And so, in short, that sort of encapsulates Anthony as a whole, which he is driven to 
um, not only excel in science, but also be able to take um, novel ideas synthesized from the reading that he's done and, uh, and create um, works of his own. And so I'm not only happy to uh, give Anthony this prize, but I'm also excited to see what work he does in the future. Physics is trying to come up to chemistry standard, but we're just glad to have a second act here. Um, yeah. First, to start with our sophomore prize, which is the Edwin Herbert Hall Prize in Physics. And I just have to put in a good word for Edwin Herbert Hall, who would, on the science side of things is probably the most famous alum from Bowdoin that no one has really heard of. But there, Experiment to discover the sign of the charge of the electron is a groundbreaking measurement in physics. And we award a prize in their honor to an outstanding sophomore who we are sure will make an equally great mark on science as they continue in their education. This year's honoree is Aidan Connerly, and congratulations. The Noel Little Prize in Experimental Physics is very dear to me this year, uh, not just because I'm an experimental scientist and I always look to the experimentalists in the department as um, really the people I can relate to and the ways in which they are um, encountering an experiential sense of science. But this year's awardee, Joyce Bohr, is someone I've known since her very first days at Bowdoin uh, when she very, very quietly said, well, I want to do science and I want to start it right, so let's make sure I really get off to a good start. It's now clear that she got off to a great start. She has worked her way through many challenging courses in the department and has done four, five semesters of independent research, including some summers, really dedicating herself to studies of uh, how to use ultraviolet light to uh, sanitize uh, N95 masks at the time when there was a shortage of good uh, protective equipment in hospitals. She dove into a project trying to see if we could help uh, sanitize things so that they could be re used repeatedly. But along the way, she's really dug into some interesting optical physics research and developed as a scientist. And yeah, I'm just so happy for her. So congratulations, Joyce. <laughs> We also have a senior prize in theoretical physics, and uh, Kieran Enzian gave his presentation of his honors research tonight, showing uh, the computational models that he was able to make of how a material that responds both electrically and elastically can uh, support waves on its surfaces. And this is research that, again, relates to these devices that uh, are important in lots of technologies, like your cell phone technology. But Kieran's study really tried to go back to first principles and think about how you could model the basic excitation in the system, and then to extrapolate from there to design new and more effective structures. And it was really an original piece of work that we all thought very highly of, and the faculty were unanimous in his recommendation for the theoretical prize in physics. So congratulations, Karen. <laughs> the last set of prizes we have are prizes that every year I just am so grateful for. And I'm grateful for these prizes, not necessarily because they're the biggest monetary awards that we can give, but they're the prizes that we give to recognize the students who've made a commitment to teaching within the department. So our LA prizes rec uh, recognize students who take the time to support the learning of students in introductory physics and who have thoughtfully and carefully engaged in 
uh, thinking about the process of learning and the ways to support learners. And for the faculty in these past years especially, those LAs have been just the most incredible support. All of your faculty really just can't say enough about how you supported them during one of the hardest times of their careers and how much joy you reminded them of in the process of teaching. So I'm really happy to uh, recognize first Braden Fisher. And then Edie Salzik. And Emma Hatt. And for all your general great work in physics and across the campus, thanks all of you. Good evening, everyone. I'm, can you hear me? I don't know. Um, I'm Todd Burzon. I'm a professor in the religion department. I'm here acting on behalf of the chair of our department, Robert Morrison, who sends his regrets that he's unable to be here this evening. He's at a monster truck rally. Um, uh, um, he's not, but that image is now seared into your brain. Um, it's, it's really my honor to present the awards this evening. These are awards that, were, that are all for writing essays, all of which were written last semester, and I think you can all agree with me that that's a remarkable achievement for a lot of very um, uh, important reasons. Um, the first is the Edgar Oaks Acorn Prize, which is awarded to the best essay written by a member of the first or second year class in our gateway class, Introduction to the Study of Religion. Um, no pressure, Katie, but you are now legally obligated to become a religion major. Um, this year's winner is Katie Drager. Oh yes, I like grabs. I'm like, I gra I grabbed her. Her. It was Roman, right, Rob? That was like legitimately Roman. Okay. See, my classics undergraduate coming. Um, the second award is the Leah Ruth Thummim Biblical Literature Prize, which is awarded to the best scholar this year, plural scholars in biblical literature. Two students that I had the privilege of teaching last semester and I'm currently teaching this semester. They should be at home working on their papers, but that's fine. Um, this year's co-winners are just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful students. I can't say enough good things about them. Ellie Pike and Leah Cornmel. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Anita Viti Kongolo, uh, Chair of Romance Languages and Literatures. Um, I will be presenting for uh, Romance Languages and Literatures uh, first, as our department is made up with uh, several sections and my colleagues have to, and, and go on with uh, Francophone studies. And my colleagues, uh, Margaret Boyle and uh, Ariel Saber, will uh, go on with um, Hispanic studies and Italian studies, uh, respectively. So we're starting with uh, our prize for excellence in Romance Languages and Literatures that goes to Francesca Elizabeth Moro and uh, Julia Elizabeth Perillo. Then our Charles H. Livingston Honors Prize in Francophone Studies goes to um, Reed Fowell. <laughs> and uh, our Goodwin Francophone Studies Prize goes to Rachel Yang. <laughs> then 
the Eaton Lee Frankfurt Studies Prize goes to Gilly, Gillian Claire Cher. Hello, I'm Ariel Saber in the Italian section of Romance Languages, and I have the great honor of um, congratulating two students who, of course, are extraordinary and I adore. There are two prizes in Italian, the Dante Prize in Italian Studies, and that goes to Lorenzo Hess uh, for his incredible work on Dante in multiple courses, not just his analysis of Dante's work, but the development of a new digital platform for analyzing patterns within the Divine Comedy, a really extraordinary amount of work he's done for Dante Studies and the future. And the next prize goes to uh, Catherine Katarina McKee. This is the Raimondi Prize for the uh, student who is the most outstanding, extraordinary Italian student. And Katerina, it's really interesting, she's writing her honors project with me on a saint from the Middle Ages, early Renaissance called Katerina di Bologna, and so I like to call her Katerina di Boden. And she is an incredible scholar who not only, like many students we've heard, has supported the Italian program and um, all of our students as a LA and as a uh, animatrice, an inspiration and a role model for our Italians and uh, our students in Italian, but she's on her way to do graduate study at Oxford University as an Italianist, which I am just so excited about. And she is a natural teacher, Caterina. I'm Margaret Boyle, I'm back again, but this time for Hispanic Studies, and it is my honor to present our Philip C. Bradley Hispanic Studies Prize, and this goes to our top senior, and actually this year, seniors in our program, and that's because we have these incredible students. Um, I feel like Emily has been up here half of the night uh, recognizing her accomplishments. One thing that hasn't been shared about Emily is that she was awarded a Fulbright to spend next year in Mexico, so I wanna make sure we celebrate that. Congratulations, Emily. Uh, I also want to talk about Kate Tapscott, who's completing an honors project with Professor Early. I have the pleasure of also being a member of the committee. She's turned in a complete draft. I'm so enjoying reading about um, post-humanist feminism. She's engaging with theory that is very complicated and we're so, and she's writing in beautiful Spanish. We're so proud of her work. And finally, it sounds like I'm going to go to war with religion to ask Katie Drager that she is now committed to Hispanic studies. Uh, we have recognized her as a, the most promising sophomore in our program. Reed Johnson on behalf of the Russian department. Uh, it is my pleasure to award the prize for excellence in Russian language and literature to Colin Lamphere. Uh, Colin Kolya uh, brings a longstanding and deep passion to the study of Russian language and culture starting back when he was still in high school uh, and he's continued this passion at Bowdoin where he's shown himself to be a serious uh, scholar of Russian literature as well as an exceptional student of the language uh, which he speaks with confidence and flair. Uh, my colleague uh, Mira Nikolova uh, also mentioned you have a flair for writing poetry in Russian as well which I was so impressed with. Um, 
Uh, Colin has also been communicating his love of Russian language to the younger generation of students uh, through the multi, uh, multilingual Mainers program. Um, I know Colin most not just as a serious student, but also as a, as a funny and sometimes even mis mischievous presence in the classroom where he enlivens our class activities with his trademark dry wit and irreverence. And that's something that I'll truly miss when he graduates in the fall. The Russian Scholar Laureate uh, is awarded to Zachary Flood. Zach Yura is one of those rare people who seem to be able to do just about anything uh, from some research in high-level mathematics that I cannot pretend to understand uh, to his Russian classes where he has excelled. Zach has developed a real grasp of Russian, especially its thorny grammar, and he's shown similar uh, talent in his literature classes as well as a careful and insightful reader. Um, I also had a pleasure to teach him in a course that was cross-listed with creative writing, where I found that he was uh, not only all those things, but also a masterly and original fiction writer as well. Even with this great range of abilities, Zach is one of the most modest students that I know, and his kindness and his sensitivity have served him so well as both a, la a, la a learning assistant and a, as a tireless tutor to his peers. Congratulations, Zach. Good evening, um, I'm Theo Green on behalf of Sociology, and the Sociology Department is thrilled to award um, to our outstanding students this year. Um, first, the award for Distinguished Public Sociology um, that will be going to Journey Brown in absentia for her amazing work in applying the sociological imagination in her work with Students for Justice to increase awareness about the issues that are impacting African American communities. Um, this year, we have the pleasure of awarding Ekaterina Filiakova with two prizes, um, not only the Eldridge Sibley Prize for her amazing scholastic work, but also the Matilda White Riley Independent Study Prize for a beautiful and sensitive um, study and presentation um, where she did research on um, the experiences of international students at Bowdoin and raising those voices. Um, she was able to capture the complexity of some of the challenges and the joys that students um, have, have um, experienced here. So congratulations. And finally, a Matilda White Riley Class Project Award, which is going to three students, and you have to forgive me for taking particular pride for these three, for this award, because all three of these students completed amazing projects in classes I taught last semester. So, pound on the back for me. Um, <laughs> the first one goes to Sarah Byers Waller for her amazing work in absentia, unfortunately, for um, drawing on her experiences as frontline worker in the COVID crisis to explore toxic masculinities in the service industry. The second one, um, prize goes to Leif Maynard in absentia for his amazing work um, on, on a website where he ex explored the transformation of East Hampton, Massachusetts, a mill town into a neo-Bohemia, and to Kirsten Yip for a sublime website in which she explores the dying hawker culture and the role of the college-educated creative class in reviving it and the tensions arising from it. So congratulations, Kirsten. Good evening, everyone. Uh, as the law's department, oh, well, first, I'm Abigail Killeen. I'm a professor of theater and chair of theater and dance. Um, as the law's department presenting, I'm going to refrain from personal anecdotes, though each of you deserve them, and I could do it. Uh, but each of you, I want to make sure you know, and Julia, if you're watching in absentia, 
Each of you have enriched our department, our classes, and our stages in your time here. And as you fly from this place, I implore you each to please remember how much your presence matters. First, I'd like to present the Bowdoin Dance Group Award to Emma Dewey. The award for excellence in dance performance goes to two students, Emma Dewey and Luz Seidel. And there are also two students receiving the award for outstanding contribution to theater and dance, and it has been outstanding, Luz Seidel and Josep Vorno. The Abraham Goldberg Prize goes to Grace Keller Long. The William H. Moody Award is presented to two, to two students this year. Ali Ambrosio, who I will miss. <laughs> yes, come now. Amelia and Amelia Lawler. <laughs> and Amelia is in absentia. That Alice Merrill Mitchell Prize goes to Alice Hawkins. <laughs> In absentia, we are pleased to present the Raymond Rutan Scholarship Award for Summer Study in Theater, theater to Julia Jennings, class of 23. The scholarship for summer study in dance goes to Ariana Bo, and I'll just say all I want to do is talk to you about it when you come back. <laughs> and lastly, our department had the honor of receiving the Dorothy Hathen Haythorn Collins Award this year, and Julia Jennings was unanimously and immediately chosen as the recipient. She is receiving that in absentia. Thank you. So let me uh, offer just a couple of quick comments. This is just a monumentally wonderful evening. Uh, for anyone who ever wonders what makes Bowdoin College special, tonight is a, just the exemplar of, uh, of what's special about Bowdoin. And I, I'll, I'll point to, to, to you to two things. One is the remarkable accomplishments, stellar, stunning accomplishments of our students across every discipline here at the college. And doing that uh, in the current times, to steal from Andy, uh, the, the challenges that have been just uh, historic, uh, and all of you have persevered uh, with help from your faculty, staff, uh, each other, your families, friends. Uh, but it's just unbelievable to see what you've been able to do. And the second is our faculty, who have dedicated themselves, again, through the last couple of years, to teaching, mentoring, befriending all of our students. Uh, and uh, what you hear when our faculty are standing on this podium is that they know you. They know our students. These are not abstract relationships. These are deep, personal relationships that have been built over four years here. And this is what makes Bowdoin such a special place, and it is such a privilege for me to be a part of this community. And so with that, I wish you a great evening. I want to ask all of us to congratulate and for you to congratulate yourselves, all of our students, on everything that you have accomplished. Well done. <laughs>